So let's take a look at the uh, US and UK constitutions together and kind of compare them. Um, we're going to be looking at the similarities, the differences, and what you'll probably see is that at first glance, the constitutions are pretty different. And you can probably get quite a few of them off the top of your head about the key differences. But the reality, or perhaps the more advanced look, is to realize that although there are key structural, structural differences, the political reality is that there are actually quite a lot of similarities. But we'll be teasing this out as the video um, goes on. As always, this video will be an introduction to these topics about the similarities and differences, and there are further readings that you could do, or should be doing, um, either in the textbook or in the, um, uh, the, the, the revision guide. So a lot of the slides I'm going to be showing you today are going to be either repeated from my UK uh, politics PowerPoint or from my US politics um, PowerPoint. So if there's anything here I go over too quickly or you want a refresher of, either go back and look at the US uh, principles of the Constitution or the UK uh, principles because um, I go through those in more detail. But both of the constitutions come from very different places. The US Constitution was made by the Founding Fathers in the 1700s and it's made at one point at one time in a brand new country where a group of people sat down and said, hey, we need to make a constitution, we're going to make it codified and we're going to have this two-tier legal system with a constitution in it. And the UK is the complete opposite. It is a long, slow evolution of small tweaks to how the country is run going from the Magna Carta, well the invasion of William, William the Conqueror, dictatorship, to the Magna Carta, to the Bill of Rights changes, to the Parliament Act, right up to now to, to, to Brexit and Fixed Term Parliaments Act and things like that. It's, it's, it's a far slower evolution over time. So we're starting off with, with our key difference. You know, they, 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 they originated and were structurally set up in different ways. And a lot of these come down to cultural differences. The cultural differences often lead to the structural um, differences. So we're going to start off a little bit with the cultural ways that the America is different to the UK. And then you can realize how this then leads to differences in their constitution. First of all, separation of church and state. Now, one of the reasons America exists in its current form is because there was a group of, it's kind of a well-known story, there was a group of pilgrims that left the UK and, and Europe in search of religious freedom. They were tired of being told what to do by, by a, a, a king and a queen that believed in, in uh, or a government that, that didn't have religious freedom. I mean, I mean, go back earlier to the year, the time of um, Elizabeth and Bloody Mary, where, where the whole country's religion changed from Catholic to Protestant and then back again. And there are countries even today in the world where there is an officially recognized faith of one kind or the other, or, or they're connected. And Britain, the United Kingdom, still has elements of this kind of connected church and state because of where it's come from. But in America, there is a definite constitutional and cultural um, separation of church and state. So for example, in the House of Lords, you can see behind me the Lord Spiritual. The Archbishop, Archbishop of Canterbury, for example, is a member of the House of Lords. He can go there and if he wished, he could speak on various issues. There's nothing like that in America. Um, each day, uh, the uh, House of Commons and House of Lords begin with a prayer, for example. So it, it, it's very much kind of built into the system that there is a kind of a religious ethos. Now, of course, you could then kind of go, well, hang on a minute, but America is now more religious than the UK is. Yeah, I know, weird, huh? Like, but technically, the 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 rigidity rigidity of the separation is stronger in America than it is in the UK because of the cultural origins. They, they left the UK for religious freedom. They came to America because they wanted to go to a place where they weren't going to be told what to do and they could be free to be whatever faith they wanted to be or none. States freedom is another cultural difference. So the, the as you're probably aware from the previous videos or should be aware, we, they started with a loose confederacy of these different states kind of very loosely bonded together. Didn't quite work, so they went for a the United States of America, but you still have Texas and Florida and California and Ohio, and these are all separate states with their own governors, their own legislatures, their own um, kind of parliament, their own traditions, their own cultures, and the Constitution reflects that, that they are the United States of America, not just America. The clue is in the name there. So federalism is built in structurally because of the cultural belief in a state's freedom. The right to bear arms. When America was at its founding level, there were problems with defending yourselves, maybe defending yourselves from the government, defending yourselves from um, 
bandits, cowboys, Indians, you know, the, those kind of things. America was the land of the outlaw. I think the Wild West, and, and I, I know I'm kind of painting a slightly kind of rosy picture, but if you think of the Wild West, people had guns to defend themselves, to defend their farms, to defend their country. And therefore there is a culture in America of I have the right to defend myself with my own weapons. And that then appears structurally in the Constitution. So the right, and, and, and of course Britain is the opposite on both of these things. We don't have independent Scotland, Wales and England in the same way, although you could argue we're getting there and we definitely don't have a right to bear arms because um, in a way we've always been under some sort of authority, whether it was the king and the queen or whether it's under parliament, there's never been a right in Britain for you to defend yourself against the state. We've always been a bit more authoritarian in that respect. And linked to that, the head of state, the Americans, when they set up, they, they wanted to make sure that they were free from tyranny, uh, free from George the, whatever it was, fifth, I think. And, and uh, so a whole system is set up with checks and balances and, and um, a separation of powers to stop them having an overly powerful dictatorship telling them what to do. And you can see that cultural change in the system. We still have a queen, they have a president. Theirs is directly elected, ours is hereditary. Um, and, and, uh, and, and it kind of stands for itself. You know, these are big cultural differences between these two uh, countries that you can see in the Constitution. Now, here's a slide that you have probably um, seen before, is that very basic level, codified and entrenched, the USA, and uncodified um, is, is the UK. And you should know what those words mean, and you should probably be able to write me a couple of paragraphs on them, because you should know the definitions, you should be able to use examples, and you should be able to explain why these are structurally, I'm using that key word from the uh, part B's there, very, very different. But I just want to take a moment and show you this image here that I, that I found online. Um, that is the difference between true and true and truth. You've got a lovely kind of shape there that is reflected on one side showing a square, reflected on another side showing a circle, but the truth is it can actually be both a square and a circle depending where the light is. And what I want to say is that the point I want to make from this is that there are there is the, the basic truth or the basic truth which is or, or, or the basic true fact. One is codified, one is uncodified. But the truth is often a bit more complex than that, such as the shape there is actually more complex than the shadows that have been shown. And so the, although it is true to say that the US one is codified and entrenched. And although it is true to say that the UK one is codified, the truth is more complex than that. Although the UK one constitutionally is codified, think about it, statute law is written. Um, the Human Rights Act is clearly written. The authoritative texts are written. Um, so there are very strong codified elements in the codified constitution, sure, Conventions aren't sure, uh, common law is not written in the same way or certainly hasn't been voted on, but we kind of know what it is. And even within the codified side to America, um, things like Supreme Court judicial review, it's not in the constitution. It was a power that was discovered later, as you'll find out kind of later in, in, the, in the course. Um, but there are elements to the, the U American constitution which are not, there are uh, elements to how America is run, which does not appear in the Constitution. So it is not fully codified in the way that you might um, have originally thought. The same goes with entrenched. Um, if the American Constitution was completely entrenched, then how are the Supreme Court able to adjust it um, by making kind of uh, rulings and, uh, on, on those kind of levels? And if, if the British Constitution is completely uncodified, then why do British politicians have such problems with issues such as Brexit or getting around um, uh, unpopular kind of referendums. And so the point I want to make here is, is especially in terms, in terms of referendums, is that a lot of British constitutional changes are effectively entrenched. Like, could Westminster just suddenly cancel the Scottish Parliament? Politically, legally, sorry, legally, yes. Constitutionally, parliamentary sovereignty, yes. In reality, there's been a referendum. They would find it very difficult to get past this democratically, this democratic vote. It's effectively entrenched. If Boris Johnson, if Boris Johnson turned around tomorrow and said, let's just forget this whole Brexit thing, it's kind of been entrenched that we are leaving because we have a constitutional result that says that we are. Now, I'm using phrases clear here like effectively entrenched, politically entrenched. It's not legally there, but it's effectively there. 
So you could write a paragraph that says, depending on the question, if the question says what are the differences, you're going to emphasize the difference between codified, uncodified, and trenched. If the question asks for analysis of these things, you could kind of say, well, it's, it is codified, but actually, in reality, that doesn't make a huge amount of difference because much of the British Constitution is codified now, or something like that. Um, but if you're talking about differences, then you can, again, kind of bring up that idea and talk about, well, there, there are different forms of entrenchment, and so on. Let's move on. Let's talk about uh, democracy for a minute. I just want to remove uh, that uh, blue one um, there for a second, if I can. Now, the British Constitution uh, in regards to democracy is uh, not as, I mean, theoretically, is not as good as the American system. Let's just have a look along, a look along this kind of table here. So on the US, if you live in America, you can vote for the lower chamber. So that's the House of Representatives. And if we go to the UK, let's, let's pretend that we're 1995 for a minute. You can also vote for the lower chamber, which is the House of Commons, so it's the same. But now let's go further down and look constitutionally at some of the similarities and differences. In America, you can vote for the upper chamber, the Senate. In the UK, nope. In the US, you can vote for the head of state, the president. In the UK, I don't remember voting for the queen, nope. In the US, you can vote for the state governor, you can vote for the state legislator, you have initiatives, referendums, recall petitions, you have many elected mayors, district attorneys, local councils, maybe kind of members of the police uh, department are elected as well, and so on, and you have a very clear separation of powers. In the UK, nope, 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 nope. Now, I've put at the top there in the UK, 1995 UK, we're going back before the Tony Blair government, and I want to make a point here. Britain is on a journey becoming a lot more similar to the US in terms of its democratic accountability. And a lot of that is down to the new Labour government of 1997 to 2010. Because if I then bring that little blue box back, if I can, you can see a lot has actually changed from the 1995 UK to the 2019 UK. We still don't vote for an upper chamber and we still don't vote for our head of state, but we do now have a lot of city mayors, London, Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham. We do now have devolution. We have Scottish Parliament, Welsh Assembly, Northern Ireland Assembly. There is now a London kind of council as well, and other ones are potentially on the way. We now do, we don't have initiatives, um, but we do, we have had many referendums since the Blair government came to power, and some of them have been called by the Conservative government as well. Thank you very much, David Cameron. Um, and we do now have the ability to recall members of parliament, and two have now been uh, taken down. Uh, we now have elected police commissioners. No one knows who they are, and no one cares, and the turnout is terrible, but they do exist. Um, but we have definitely moved that way. Now, again, think of the essay. If the essay is asking you for differences, emphasize elected head of state, the fact that the upper chamber is very, very different, if you're looking for similarities, you can see them. Now, Supreme Court differences and separation of powers. You can see I've got separation of powers and Supreme Court over there. Back in 1995, you had a fusion of powers in the UK. You had all of them appearing in Parliament in some way. But that has now been changed in that the Supreme Court now has its own building and the Supreme Court was created to kind of be physically somewhere else. And you can see in a way that the Supreme Court is becoming more powerful. Um, I'm making this video on the 23rd of September, and tomorrow, the 24th, the Supreme Court is going to make a ruling for whether Boris Johnson, uh, the proroguing or suspension of Parliament, was legal or not. Now, I don't know which way it's going to go, but when was the last time Britain had a situation where the court was about to make a ruling on what a Prime Minister could and couldn't do? As far as I only know, it's only really happened twice or three times, and most of them involved um, Gina Miller. Again, similarities or differences make the case. You can, make, you can go both ways on these. Um, but there's lots to, to talk about um, and evaluate as you're uh, going through. Sovereignty. In the US, the Constitution is sovereign and it gives a federal split sovereignty where you have a federal government, national powers, which are, have enumerated specific powers, and if it's not enumerated or within the elastic clause, then it belongs to the states, the Reserve Powers, Bill of Rights, Article 10. UK, parliamentary sovereignty, sovereignty. It's unitary, it's one place. Parliament is above everything in the UK, legally speaking, and the Constitution is above everything, legally speaking, in the US. Key difference there that you could definitely expand upon um, in an essay, probably along the structural uh, uh, route to kind of go there. 
Now, so here are some other ways which, in which we could talk about whether they are similar or different. I've got four that I'm going to be discussing, and then that'll be the end of this particular topic. There's lots more in the textbook, lots more examples and things that you can kind of look at, but this gives you a range of things that you could talk about in, in an essay. First of all, separate or fused, clear separation of powers in America. Presidency executives over here, judiciary is over here, um, legislatures over here, and you can't appear in more than one. Barack Obama was a senator. If he wanted to be president, he had to resign from being a senator and take up his role in the executive. He's physically separated and and actually separated in terms of the, 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 the powers. Um, UK is Prime Minister's questions. The Prime Minister, the executive, goes to the legislature, is in the legislature, she is an MP, her whole cabinet are all MPs, they all sit on the front row of the legislature, they are fused, they are bound together. Um, and then take that even further, that means that Parliament, more or less most of the time, forget Brexit for a second, follows the will of the Prime Minister and the Executive. They're not as nearly as independent. When, when the Prime Minister, with her major his or her majority in Parliament, goes there and says, we're going to do this with tax, or we're going to do this with education, Parliament normally goes with them, because they've got an inbuilt majority, and the whole government and cabinet are part of there. And if you want to get promoted in the House of Commons, you've got to you know, suck up to your leader, and you've got to follow the party whip and all that. But in America, you can get a legislature which is run by a different party than the president. Think right now, Donald Trump is a Republican and the House of Representatives has a Democrat majority. So it's a very different structural difference that can lead to very different politics. Um, so there's two differences. The personnel is different and then because the personnel are different, you end up with political differences as well in terms of how laws are made or the control that the executive has over the legislature. Obviously, Brexit is the exception because the executive really has lost control of the legislature over the last two or three years because of Brexit. Um, but that is a unique issue that you should definitely be aware of and definitely write about and definitely talk about. But don't be fooled into thinking that this is normal. The second chamber. Um, big differences here. You know, the Senate is elected slowly, a third of it every two years. The UK won the House of Lords, it's, it's appointed or hereditary. That's, that's a huge difference. That is a huge difference in terms of, like, people will know, in America, people will know who their senator is. They will know who their representative in that upper chamber are and perhaps what they voted for and what they do. Um, most people in the UK probably couldn't name you 10 members of the House of Lords. They might be able to, but you know what, you see what I'm saying? There's, not, there's, no, there's no ownership of that's my lord, that's not my lord, or that, that, that's my uh, elements, elements there. And, it, and it, the impact of that is huge. In the Senate, if the Senate doesn't go along with the law, the House of Representatives can't get it passed. They're equal chambers in the House of, in the UK Parliament. It's like that. The Commons, sorry, the Commons can overrule the Lords. They can only delay for a year. And when was the last time they did that? You know, very, very different culturally, and then as a result, very, very different structurally as well. The Supreme Court. There's a lovely analogy in one of the textbooks that says that if the, if the US Supreme Court is a, a bulldog or something like that, some sort of lion, then the UK Supreme Court is a, is a chihuahua. Although they have the same name, Supreme Court, the reality is very different. The US Supreme Court is enforcing this codified entrenched constitution and they are um, backing up and making rulings that affect the whole of America and maybe overrule the executive and knock down state powers and all, the, all those kind of things like that. The UK Supreme Court doesn't have a constitution. It's not able to make these judicial reviews to strike down laws and to, to curtail the powers of, of prime ministers and, and presidents. Maybe it's changing right now, as I said earlier in this video, maybe the Supreme Court is making a ruling right now of, of whether Boris Johnson, what he can and can't do. Um, so maybe the, oh, the UK Supreme Court is becoming more powerful, but we're still talking a chihuahua with a, with a, with a spiky collar rather than, rather than a bulldog. We, we, you, could, you could make an argument that they are becoming more similar, but the US one is still powerful. Like think about the amount of people, people know who's on the US Supreme Court. People couldn't name you most members of the UK Supreme Court or even any. Um, obviously we know them because we're the politics students like Lady Hale and other ones like that, but, but we are exceptional. And lastly, the federal unitary devolution kind of differences. You've got that idea that, first of all, they're different because America is federal, powers to the federal system, powers to the states, and the UK is unitary. All the power is in the UK Parliament. Clearly different. You can make a paragraph. Or, or and, you can then kind of say, well, hang on a minute, 
devolution is quite similar to a federal system. And the word you could use is quasi-federal. You could kind of say, well, they have given away many of their powers to the Scottish Parliament, to the Welsh Parliament, uh, Northern Ireland Parliament. They can choose to give them out, but of course they can take them back. The Northern Ireland uh, Assembly hasn't been sitting now for a number of years. The GLC what powers were taken back. They've also increased, this is going the other way, they've also increased the power of the Scottish Parliament in 2016 under the, the, the vow that Gordon Brown and David Cameron made. When was the last time the federal government increased the powers of the states um, in America? Different presidents have, have, have kind of gone that way, but they haven't constitutionally changed those powers um, in the same way that there's a fle with the, like the flexibility in the UK system. So there's lots to talk about. The checks and balances, it's in America, it's very much built in from the very beginning. There are similarities, of course, the way the legislature can try and curtail the prime minister, the way the Supreme Court can overrule the other elements or, or kind of make rulings. You can also see it in terms of things like, basically things like select committees, you know, kind of exist in both. But in America, they're far more clear, they're far more kind of laid out. In, America, in the UK, it's far more based on convention and far more based in the you know, kind of the traditions that we have. So there you go. I understand in this video, I haven't necessarily been as clear in terms of going, here are the similarities and here are the differences. But if you want to get really good marks in politics, you need to go beyond just a simple list of say, of saying different and actually show really good understanding and kind of go, yeah, it's actually all a bit murky, really. There are clear differences, but actually, are they all that different? Or there are clear similarities, but actually there are differences as, as they kind of go. So this is more a topic for you to kind of read about and think about and play with your paragraphs and play with the way that you um, uh, think about these things and write something that isn't just B grade or C grade, but actually shows top level analysis and understanding. And hopefully this video or reading helped you to do that. Thank you for watching. If I've made any mistakes, put them in the comment section. If you liked it, don't forget to like it. And I will see you on the next one.